I don't know if you uh, had a chance to tune into some of the uh, King Charles III uh, coronation. This was quite uh, something. It, I say, yeah, I don't know if you had a chance. The thing I watched was there was a YouTube um, video, eight hours long. So it, there's enough to watch there. Anyhow, uh, and during, I didn't watch the whole thing, but during part of it, uh, somebody said um, they had all the, the crown and the orb and the this and that and that and the cape and the, uh, whatever it was, and uh, they said, uh, in the king uh, is England. In fact, the king is England. So we don't have anything like that. You know, we have maybe, uh, I, and of course, uh, I'm presuming uh, any of you have um, been to England or you've met an Englishman or woman, uh, I'm presuming uh, it doesn't work the opposite way. Like, and every English person is the king. That's the, obviously, that's not the point. The point is, no, one guy is the king or the queen at a time, and that person is in fact England. I said, wow. So I was thinking about that, you know, America. Um, we have, I guess the closest thing we had with that, we're celebrating Memorial Day this weekend on top of Pentecost, and, uh, or underneath the Pentecost. And, uh, you know, we have like this image of Uncle Sam, but that's, you know, he's not real, you know. He's kind of a, uh, a character, uh, a figure, uh, that maybe speaks for the United States, Uncle Sam, U.S., but uh, we don't have that. Uh, what we are celebrating, however, in Pentecost today, sisters and brothers, is that uh, something uh, related to, and what I'm finding very interesting, I know I find some things interesting that, other, that most people don't, but on this Pentecost and during this Easter preaching, you know, I've been uh, worked up about this Lent and Easter in the fact that we have sanitized Jesus out of our understanding of the great gifts of the sacraments, the seven sacraments. And so I've been going through them this Easter time and uh, each and every time, you know, we've got great catechism. We have great rituals and sacraments celebrated. But have we, event, have we been evangelized? Have we been convinced that behind every Eucharist, in every confessional box, in every celebration of confirmation, in every wedding ceremony, in every anointing of the sick, is it in fact Jesus who is there and Jesus who is encountered there? Or are we maybe one or two steps back where, well, no, I understand, I understand the Mass, I understand the sacrament, you know, soul, blood, blood, body and blood, soul and divinity. I have a philosophical, a theological definition, a catechism understanding. But what I'm wondering, and this is for myself as well, have we met and known Jesus there? Well, what happened to Pentecost today that we are celebrating and has been operative uh, and behind these seven sacraments for the last 2,000 years is that is, in fact, in the members of the church, we find Jesus. So just the opposite of the, the King of England. In the King of England, we meet England. In the members of the church, we meet Jesus. In fact, each of us is called by our baptism and by our participation in word and sacrament and the communal life. We are called to be avatars, each of us, another Christ. As we go out into the mission field, which is the world, our daily lives, sisters and brothers, when they meet you because of Pentecost, because of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, because of the, Holy, the love of God has been poured into your heart by the Holy Spirit, because of that, they are meeting not just you. They are meeting you and all of you, but they are also called and able to meet Jesus Christ and him alive and him there to save them. So we participate in the life of Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, and we participate in Jesus' saving mission. So we are not just a bunch of members of the Catholic Church. 
That's been my problem. I've been saying, you know, I think we're great on adopted children. We're great members of the body of Christ. We got that. We're um, members of the Catholic Church. I know the rules. I know the rituals. I got it locked down. I've been doing it for 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 years. But what we uh, maybe have not clicked on to is that we participate in the saving mission of Jesus, each of us and all of us together. The Second Vatican Council has said to us so powerfully in its document on the church, Lumen Gentium or the Constitution on the Church, paragraph 9, if you want to look it up, a very, very interesting and beautiful reading, but it says there that this people of God, that's me and you, by faith and baptism, we have been constituted as a communion of life, love, and truth. In fact, instituted by Christ as a visible sign. Does that start to sound familiar? You remember that catechism lesson? What is a sacrament? It is as a visible sign of the unity and the salvation won for us in Jesus Christ. Sisters and brothers, the Second Vatican Council has considered the church as, if you will, they didn't say this, but an eighth sacrament. So what I've been saying about the seven sacraments and that maybe we have sanitized Jesus out of them so that when we come to celebrate Mass or come to a wedding or come to confession, we are not encountering Jesus. We're not expecting to see Jesus. I told you, hey, when last time I was in the confession, somebody came and peered around, looked like, like that, and said, Jesus, are you in here? They should. He is. I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about in the great celebration of the sacrament of reconciliation, we meet Jesus face to face in his mercy, his love, his forgiveness. We are saved by him in it. And that happens in the church. But So what I'm saying about the seven sacraments, we may have sanitized Jesus out of it. That's why a Catholic of 50 years can walk into one of these mega churches and somebody's saying, you know, do you know Jesus? You don't know Jesus. And they say, you know what, Ma? I'm going to go get baptized again. Why, honey? Because what I, they may help me realize down there is that after all my life being a Catholic, I never met Jesus. God, I want to pull my hair out and there's not much left. We never introduce them to Jesus. So, what I'm thinking today is that if the church, in fact, can be considered like an eighth sacrament, that maybe we have sanitized Jesus out of our experience and our expectations of the church. And that's me and you. And this one, it's kind of like the priesthood. Remember, I said this is the toughest nut, ladies and gentlemen to crack that, that a guy like me has been put down here by the Holy Spirit and the bishop to be a, a unique and another Jesus Christ for you. So you've got to really brighten up those eyes of yours of faith to see through all of this to get to Jesus. But I'm thinking the same thing with the church. What is your attitude about the church? I mean all of us up here. I know what you're saying in the car. Oh, those people. You know, they, they, that guy. Oh, yeah, that's one of Father's favorites. Yeah, yeah. That guy. Huh? It's a big organization. People say, hey, Father, this is a big business. You're the boss. Yeah. So, oh, that's a rich parish. Oh, yeah. They like to say that. They like to say that. Oh, beautiful. This is a beautiful, beautiful parish. So we have many opinions about the church, the parish, what's going on, you and me and our relationship, what we're doing. What I don't know, sister and brothers, is do we know the church, all of us, and do we experience the church as Jesus? Have we not, possibly because of hurt feelings maybe, because of bad formation, because of bad experiences at church, because of maybe unfriendly people even? I'll give it to you. Have we not been, have we sanitized and moved our idea about the church away from Jesus? The Holy Spirit came upon the people 
in that time on the first Pentecost, and it comes upon us again in our individual baptism, but again today in this, bapti- in this celebration of Mass, and sisters and brothers, it makes us one in the church, and in the church we are the visible sign, the outward sign of an in reality. We are Jesus. And what I'm going to say is that my dad probably said this to me, and that's probably where I get all this stuff, huh? You know? You're an s doc or something like that. You better start acting like it. You're Jesus. I am Jesus. We together are an irrefutable, sacramental, and powerful presence of Jesus. And we ought to start acting.